All right, we're going to talk about knife knives and knife cuts. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the construction of the knife. Uh, the tip and the point, uh, very much the same. Uh, the blade itself, uh, super important uh, type of metal that they use. Um, do you want to sharpen it all the time? Does it hold an edge? Uh, the cutting edge is 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 very important. Uh, the heel, uh, use that a lot of times to open up cans. Uh, never try to open up cans with the tip of your knife. Uh, that that's not a good thing. Uh, if you if you're only only use a knife to open a can if you're really in a bind, the handle. Uh, all different types of handle, the tang, which is the metal part of the blade that runs into the handle, the rivets, um, the bolster or the shank, and then the back of the knife. So let's start off with the blade itself. Um, a high quality professional shelf chef, chef's knife is going to have a blade that runs um, that runs into the handle and a full tang. Um, it is going to be made of uh, high uh, carbon stainless steel and stainless steel is used for a couple of different reasons. It doesn't discolor, it doesn't rust, and when you cut uh, a piece of uh, vegetable or fruit or meat with it, it doesn't leave a metallic flavor. Um, some metals will do that. Um, this is my favorite uh, chef's knife, Victrinox. Uh, holds the edge really, really well. It stays sharp really, really well. And it's really kind of your choice as to which which um, which knife you use, which company you use. It's a very personal uh, personal thing. All right, so the tang. The tang is the metal. The, the, the blade is here. The whole thing is made out of one piece of metal. Now, this has a full tang. You can see in a lot of the knives, um, you can see have uh, the uh, the metal. You can see the the tang all the way all the way through it. Um, the handle goes around that and then the rivets hold the handle into place. And some have a full tang and some have a partial tang. Uh, most knives that are big and are gonna be used for large things um, have a full tang because it's needed. Smaller knives, touring knives, pairing knives, those, those kind of knives, they don't need a full tang so they usually don't have one. <clears throat> the handle, as you can see in this photo, there's many different types of handles. There's wood ones. Uh, hard oak and cherry. Um, there's plastic ones. There's uh, there's ones that uh, that I prefer the plastic ones. The wooden ones tend to get pitted, uh, as far as I'm concerned, and they tend to do to decay a lot quicker. Um, but it's again a personal a personal reference, a personal feel. Depends on how it feels in your hand. Depends on on the weight of the knife. You're going to hold it for a long time. The handle is super important. Um, I, I judge it on, on a couple of different things, but it's it's kind of a personal thing. But they're made out of many different things. One of the things that is nice is if you do have one that's different, like this guy over here, you're not going to see many knives that, are, that, are, that have this kind of um, workmanship and craftsmanship on them. That knife will stick out in, um, in a kitchen where these knives might blend in. So you're not going to be searching for your knife as much. And if you walk by and see somebody with your knife with a, with a special handle like that, you'll definitely know. Um, the rivets, those are the little those screws that hold the uh, the handle into place. Um, they should be smooth. They should be uh, they should be uh, flush with the finish. You want to make sure that they're not harboring any bacteria. Um, you want to make sure there's no pits. And then the other thing too is if you're holding a knife in your hand, and I'm holding this knife that has the rivets on it and these rivets are even a little bit above, I'm gonna feel that as I'm using my knife, I'm gonna feel that every time, and uh, it won't take very long to build up a callus, um, or actually to get a blister. Uh, you'll, you'll, end up to, you'll end up building up a callus. But um, last thing you want is to get a blister on your finger, and it sounds silly, so it's just, it's just a little blister. But if you've got to pick up a knife and you've got to cut for four and a half hours straight, you, that blister could really, really get, be, become a problem. Uh, the bolster. <clears throat> now, the bolster is this part right here where the handle meets the blade. And you can see all of these have a different bolster. At the top, it kind of like goes up and then the blade is here. Same thing here. This is part of the, of, of the metal part of the knife, part of the blade, and it, it joins here. This one has like a scoop on it. Whoops. Gotta go back. This one has a bit of a scoop on it. Uh, but it's still, and you can see the tang runs the full distance of this knife. Um, this one is kind of leveled off, and this one, the plastic handle goes right up to it. 
and the same thing here where the handle goes right up. The knife, the, 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 the knife goes and the tang goes underneath and the handle goes right up to it. Again, it's a personal preference. This one is a little different uh, because the metal is there, but I don't even feel it when I grab. The palm of my hand is here because I'm putting my thumb on the blade itself. So um, I don't even feel that tang. But one that, that has a big fat one like this, you know, you can definitely feel that when you're holding on to the knife. Again, it's a personal preference. Okay, so we've talked about the, the way they make knives and, uh, and the different components of the knife. Now we're going to talk about the different types of knives. If you said to me, hey, chef, you have to go and you have to help somebody uh, cook um, and you can only bring one knife with you. I'm definitely going to bring my chef's knife, or also known as a French knife. Uh, they vary from eight, inch, eight, 8 inches long to 14 inches long. I'm not a big fan of the really, really huge ones. Uh, I like uh, in between the two. Again, it's a personal choice. But with your chef's knife, you can peel, you can trim, you can chop, you can dice, you can slice. Um, if you have a really good chef's knife and it's nice and sharp, you can also use that as a slicer on a buffet if you're going to do uh, – uh, turkey or um, any kind of any kind of a, a roasted item on a buffet. Uh, bread knives, uh, they have the the uh, serrated edge. Um, usually they are they are long and thin. Sometimes they're offset ones, um, and primarily used to cut bread. Uh, boning knives, usually a five to seven inch blade. It's long, um, and the boning knife usually is very uh, is is kind of firm and not flexible, um, so you can get right down to the to the, the the bone itself and cut the meat away. Used to to take bones out of things. The paring knife, little small guy, all right. And the paring knife is used. The word pear means to peel uh, from fruits and vegetables, and it's a small little knife that you use to do those that, to do just that: peel small fruits and vegetables. Tournay knife is very much like a paring knife, except for the the uh, blade has got a curve to it, sort of like a, a bird's beak. And what you do is you use that and you draw it towards you. It already has the curve on it, and you make tournay vegetables. Um, the fillet knife. Now, the, the fillet knife and the boning knife will look very, very similar. The difference is the fillet knife, the boning knife, this is the boning knife. It's really kind of firm. The fillet knife is, is almost exactly the same, except for the blade. It can be firm, but if I'm going to fillet fish, I want that blade to be soft. Um, I want it to be bendable, flexible, so I can put my my uh, my but my blade on the bone itself, and I can draw my knife across, and I can hear it pop, 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 pop as I'm going across the bones of the of the, the of the fish, and I want to angle the knife down so as I'm drawing the 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 knife across the fish. I'm scraping across the bones and I'm taking as much of the meat as I can of the fish off. So if my knife is not is not uh, flexible, it's difficult to do that and you end up cutting into the meat. If the knife is flexible, you can put a tremendous amount of pressure down on those bones and bring the knife across and the bones will stay there and the meat will come off. So I like my, 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 uh, my fillet knife to be flexible. Next one is a butcher's knife. Um, 12 to 14 inches long, has a really rigid blade, and it has a 25 degree angle on the um, on the end of it. It goes up. Uh, it's used to cut meat, poultry, large seafood like uh, swordfish and a tuna, um, and it definitely will have a full tang. And the 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 uh, blade is very very rigid. And the last one we're going to talk about is the slicer or the carving knife. All right, the slicer, the carving, carving knife, and you can see the difference. It's kind of hard because the angle of this thing, but you can see the difference in the size between the the, um, the fillet knife or the bony knife and the slicer. Uh, slicer is used on the buffet when you're uh, cutting, carving uh, steamship rounds or um, any kind of meat cut to order, small order for for the customers. Usually has a nice rigid blade because you end up might, might have to end up cut through some bone out there, and uh, usually is very very sharp. All right, so now we're going to talk about the cuts. All right, so this is known as chiffonade. It means to finally slice, um, and basically you're making ribbons, little strips, 
out of uh, leafy vegetables and herbs. A lot of times used as a garnish. The next one is a rondelle, and that is a round cut. Kind of makes sense. Uh, cut from cylindrical vegetables like a carrot or, uh, like in this case, a tomato, cucumbers, and basically you're making a round cut. The next one is pretty easy. It's a diagonal cut. Same thing. You're going to use a round vegetable, and you're going to cut it on an angle so you end up more of an oval. Uh, it appears like the vegetable is bigger, and the customer seems like they're getting more. It gives a different look, so it's to make them all round. Uh, the roll cut. And what you do here is you're going to cut your ang your, your knife is going to be on an angle. You're going to uh, cut your vegetable, and then you're going to roll the vegetable 180 degrees, so basically a quarter of a turn. And then you're going to leave the knife on that same angle and cut again. And you end up getting these triangle type shape uh, uh, things. Great for carrots. All right. So the basic cuts that we're going to that you need to know is a brunoise. And um, brunoise is French for uh, a cube, and it's one eighth of an inch. All right, so a small dice is going to be a quarter of, of an inch. Uh, medium dice is a half. Uh, large is three quarters. And then there's julienne, um, an eighth of an inch, a matchstick, if you will. Now, as a teacher, the first year that I was teaching, I, uh, I thought this was going to be great. I'm going to buy all these vegetables. We're going to go into the kitchen. Everybody's going to have their station. Everybody's going to have their knife, and they're all going to go to town. They're all going to cut vegetables. Um, it was a hot mess because I did not realize that my students had no concept of how to, A, read a ruler, or B, what, what even a quarter of an inch or half an inch looks like in real life. So what I had to do was start teaching them how to read a ruler. So that's what we're going to do next. All right. So this is a ruler. The top part here, all these little tiny lines, these, it's a metric system. All right. MM is mil, uh, millimeter and then CM is centimeters. Um, the bottom part is the uh, standard uh, American way to measure things. Um, and each one of these numbers represents an inch. From here to here is one inch. From here to here is one inch. If you look at these lines, the inch is the longest line. The half inch is the next longest line. The quarter of an inch is the next longest line. Now, some things, some issues that I ran into with my students were, were Chef, there's only two quarters of an inch inside of the, uh, of the inch itself. No. This represents a quarter of an inch. And then from here to the half also represents a quarter of an inch. From here to here, it represents a quarter of an inch. And from here to here, it represents a quarter of an inch. And then the shortest lines in this example is an eighth of an inch. And then uh, we'll go to the next one. I'll show you. So here's the inches, one, two, three, four. Next one after that, it the white arrow is showing you this is from here to here is a half an inch, right? So one inch is from here to here. Half an inch is from here to here. From here to here is a half an inch. From here to here is a half an inch. So that's why you have the white arrows to show you this is the half an inch, all right? So from a half an inch, we can see this is a half. From here to here is a half. So from here to here has to be what? A quarter. So you can see from here to here is a quarter. 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 Everybody's familiar with the, with uh, four quarters and one dollar. So um, if there's four quarters and a dollar, that this is one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. Okay. So if I tell you I need 75 cents, you're going to give me one, two, three quarters. That's three quarters of an inch. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right. So the next one, um, this is just showing you exactly where the where the quarter of an inch is. The white arrow, the red arrow, arrow is marking the quarter of an inch on the ruler. But the white arrow is showing you from here to here is a quarter, from here to here is a quarter, from here to here is a quarter, from here to here is a quarter. And the next one is an eighth of an inch. So we went from the tallest one's an inch, second tallest one's a half inch, third tallest one's a, a, a quarter of an inch. So the, the next shortest one is an eighth of an inch. And so between one inch and two inches, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Eight separate parts, right? One of these is one eighth of an inch. If you if somebody said give me five eighths of an inch, you would go one, two, three, four, five. That's five eighths of an inch from here to here. So the next slide is going to show you 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just like I just walked you, whoops, just like I just walked you through, uh, one through eight right there. All right. So what, now that we know how to, how, how to uh, use a ruler, what I always make my students do is measure it out. Um, I put in this, uh, I put it on, on this, on this paper, the pencil. So you can have an idea of just how long two inches is. Again, I, I found that a lot of kids had no concept of an inch, a quarter of an inch, half an inch. So this gives them an idea. Everybody knows what, what the size of a pencil looks like. So this is the pencil laying on, 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 the, um, on the piece of paper. The broom was is only an eighth of an inch, right? You go back to that ruler, and this is an actual ruler. So if you look down here, right, so we have from here to here is an inch. From here to here is the half, next longest line. From here to here is a quarter of an inch. From here to here, that's an eighth of an inch. Super small, smaller than you would think. And then when I hand them a knife and tell them to go in the kitchen to cut a quarter of an inch, they don't look at me like I have four heads. I usually make them take this paper with them into the kitchen so they have a better guide as to what size we're talking about. So small dice is a quarter of an inch. And again, we go back down to the bottom. So from here to here is the quarter. And then a medium dice is a half an inch. So from here to here is a half an inch. So for Julianne, an eighth of an inch by two inches long. So an eighth of an inch is from here to here. And then two inches long is from eight to 10, two inches long. Eighth of an inch this way, two inches long this way. Eighth of an inch square on the end, two inches long this way. And then a batonet is uh, two inches long and it's hard to see in this photo, but it's a quarter of an inch. So you go down here from here to here is a quarter. And then from the eight all the way to the 10. Um, again, I talked about the longer the lines are, those how, how you're measuring um, the, uh, the distance. So the longest lines from here to here is one inch. Second shortest line from here to here is a quarter of an inch. Next shortest, or excuse me, a half an inch. The next shortest is a quarter. The next shortest is an eighth. Not on the one that I showed you a minute ago is the 16th. The 16th is also there. So if you're making this broom wise and it's an eighth of an inch, it's only from here to here. If you're making a fine broom wise, it's only from this long line to this little short line right here. It's sixteenth of an inch. Super, super, super fine. So we'll go to the next slide and I'll show you. So uh, a, a classic French broom wise is going to be an eighth of an inch thick. right? So here's the eighth of an inch thick, thick and it's basically a cube. And it's three millimeters for all those you who, who, uh, or who like metric system. And it's an eighth of an inch. So the fine is only a sixteenth of an inch. Very, very super small. All right. Um, a quarter of an inch is a small dice. A half an inch is a large dice. Uh, Julianne, classic Julianne, the one you will need to know for a test. Eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch by two inches long. A fine julienne is a sixteenth of an inch, super, super, super small. Um, a batonet is a quarter of an inch. All right, it's, it's also it's just like a julienne. It's a stick, but the end of it is a quarter by a quarter by a quarter, and then it's two inches long, six millimeters. Um, a large dice, or excuse me, a large stick is going to be a half an inch, uh, and then it's going to be uh, two inches long. And an extra large one is going to be three quarters of an inch. The, the half an inch one is probably something you're going to use on a buffet. And have band-aids ready. I will be doing a video on the exact way to hold a knife and going through all these vegetable cuts and explaining uh, the process by which we do the, the knife cuts. Um, and uh, I'll show you the claw cut and the way to hold the knife. Uh, but for now, now you understand what the cuts are. And you also understand what the knives are. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.